O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Matthew, chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother, John, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here if you wish. I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. In many ways, the transfiguration of Jesus is one of those miracles that defies explanation. Many of Jesus' miracles defy explanation, but this one in particular is so extraordinary that it bears some consideration. First, Christ takes Peter, James, and John and goes up to the mountain. And while there, the gospel tells us that, quote, he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Think about this. What this means is that for a brief moment on earth, Christ became who he is in reality, he became the embodiment of God on earth. And while there, a completely different miracle occurs. Moses and Elijah suddenly appear and they begin conversing with Jesus. So now we have the physical embodiment of God on earth showing in all of his glory, speaking with two of the greatest prophets in Jewish history. Imagine being Peter, James, or John. You were a fisherman. Now suddenly, you're here witnessing something so powerful, your mind can barely comprehend it. Peter's reaction is understandable. He is so taken aback and so in awe that he immediately begins to, to, to justify his presence and the presence of James and John to, to Jesus. He says, it is good for us to be here. Uh, I'll make a dwelling for you guys. No. No, we'll get to that in a minute. Because immediately what happens after that statement, yet another miracle occurs. A cloud comes over there and from the cloud a voice says, hey, this is my son. He's my beloved. Do what he tells you to do. Well, a voice coming out of the cloud was too much for, for Peter, James, and John. They fell to the ground, <laughs> overcome by fear. Jesus does what Jesus does, and he comes over and he touches them, and he calms them and says, don't be afraid, and they leave the mountain. So many times in our own lives, we are witnesses to miracles. So it's important for us to remember, as we see the everyday miracles and the extraordinary miracles, that Christ asks us to be witness to these miracles. He asks us. Like Peter, James, and John, we do not need to justify our presence when a miracle occurs around us. We, like them, are humble people, especially compared to the grandeur and majesty of Christ. That said, humble people, sinners, broken men and women, were those whom Christ chose to follow him. 
Humble people were the ones who witnessed the miracles that he performed. Remembering to be humble as life throws challenge after challenge at us is critically important as we go about our lives. Relying on God, opening our hearts to his miracles, and being open to the wonder of his majesty, such as was on display during the transfiguration, help to remind us in the grand scheme of things that compared to God, we are but humble humans. Yet in our humbleness, God allows us to share in his wonder and in his majesty, to be touched by him and be witnessed to him. Let us be open to miracles, welcome the glory of God, and stay humble in the eyes of our Lord. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls which separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>